I'm what you call、uh, an obsessive Knights fan. Knights into Dreams,、uh, for those not in the know, is a game for the Sega Saturn that was created by Sonic Team. One of the only worthwhile titles worth playing on the system. It's become a cult classic. The simplified version of the storyline is you play as Knights,、uh, a renegade nightmare creature, though he doesn't look like it. And、uh, throughout the game, he helped two children reclaim stolen dream energy or idea from his creator Wiseman and all his minions. And、uh, you fight other nightmare creatures. It, it's pretty cut and dry in that regard. I've been a fan of the series since I was a little kid. I've held on to my Sega Saturn for just this reason. It's worth noting that only die-hard fans will actually spell the game's name out with the weird capitalization and the title. And on countless versions of the full game,、uh, according to region, as well as demo versions and the Christmas edition of the game, in some circles,、uh, there's a call for beta versions of the game. Not that any seem to be available to the public. Most people want them for research purposes. I, however, want one to see for myself the things that were left out of the final version. Particularly, I was after a lost level and boss. People who cracked the data format used in Saturn games. Had dug up information about a boss named Self, as well as an unused level. In the data format, it was labeled as Clarus Tower. Obviously,、uh, being meant for the female character Clarus. There are seven levels total in the entire game. The seventh being shared by both characters at the end of the game, and playing exactly the same for both, aside the different character models. Most Knights fans are dying to play this level and its boss, though a version with them both intact has proven to be non-existent. Nevertheless, I hoped against all hope that I'd find a copy where both were playable. One day, I stumbled upon a listing on eBay marked "Sega Saturn Knights Disc." It was a pretty mundane naming for a listing. I took a peek, expecting to find one of the overly marked U.S. versions that you could find scattered all over the place. What I saw wasn't that. The photo on the listing showed that it was a gold CD-R-esque disc, with the word "Knights" marked on it in marker underneath. What appeared to be katakana, or at least I think it was. I haven't taken a Japanese course in like five years, but it was listed for incredibly cheap. So I hit buy it now, and I waited for it to arrive. I noted after buying that the seller had absolutely no feedback. Regardless of whether or not they might be a crook or a new user, I decided I'd wait for it to arrive. Less than a week later, it arrived in the mail. I remember the packaging: a Manila envelope, no return address, and the disc was exactly as it appeared in the photo. My heart soared. I quickly confirmed that the Sega Saturn booted it, albeit to a slightly different title screen than the original, and went to leave feedback for the seller. It appeared when I got there. That they deleted their account. I thought it strange, but disregarded it, as I was more than ready to dive into the beta version of this game. I went back to my Saturn and booted up the game again. It lacked the final game's opening video, but the title screen looked similar, aside from Knights being in a different pose. The logo was the same, and it lacked title screen music, much like the original. I hit start and made a new save game on my Saturn. The menus were pretty much identical to the final version, but eager to find the differences, I selected Il- but eager to find the differences, I selected Elliot as my playable character and started playing Elliot's story. Elliot's story played out exactly identical to the final version, same level layouts and the same bosses. It seemed like nothing was different until I got to Twin C, the final level. The layout was the exact same, but when I got to the end of the level, there were noticeable differences. You see, in the first level, you can't join with knights at the beginning. You have to fly through the level as a kid you selected. At the end of the level, after you've retrieved all the idea, the kid you weren't playing as shows up as an NPC and helps you break the barrier over knights, so you can join with him and fight the final boss. Clarus didn't show up. There was no barrier. Elliot joined with knights and went to fight the final boss alone. I figured that they hadn't programmed the in-game cutscene I described,、uh, for this version at least. 
I beat the boss, and the credits rolled through with the cutscene from the final game. After the credits ended, I started the Claris game. Like Elliot's, it played almost exactly the same as the final. That was until after I played through her first three levels. I was expecting the final level for Claris to be Twin Seeds, but when I went back to the level select, the symbol for her final level was different than the Twin Seeds symbol. It was the shape of a downward spiral. My heart almost leapt out of my chest. It was the lost level. I hoped that it was fully playable. And it was right there in front of me. Without a second thought, I hit the A button and proceeded to play it. That's when Clarice did something that surprised me. She changed the expression on her face. As the character select screen turned into the beginning of the level, her normal cheerful and optimistic face changed to display a fearful frown. A title card for the level was not displayed. As the level stated, Claris touched down on the platform outside of the Idea Palace, holding knights. As the level started, Claris touched down on a platform outside of the Idea Palace, holding knights. Below the platform was a set of dark, foggy ruins. They seemed to make the shape of a spiral going downwards. Before I could examine the level any further, a creepy laugh, unlike I'd heard in the game before, sounded, and Claris was flung off the platform into the air. She floated there, suspended, as the platform holding knights and the Idea Palace plummeted into the dark depths below. There was no music. Only silence. Clarice's character model clenched herself into a fetal position and floated, shivering in the air for a moment. It was then that I regained control over her. There was no time limit in this level. You merely just flew down the spiral towards the bottom. As she flew further down, the creepy laugh from before started up again. It grew more intense the deeper you flew. At points, I could make out a speech. It was saying things like, God has abandoned you, or there's no delight in dreams, only sweet death, morbid, terrible things, and I began to hear crying. After a short while, I realized it was Claris. This continued on for what felt like, felt like hours. And when I got to the bottom, there was a small transition. Claris touched down in a spotlight area in the middle of a black nothing. She looked around as knights floated down in front of her. Except something was different. Knights didn't look right. He looked grayed, almost rotten. The laughter intensified even further, and knights flew into the ground like a rag doll. The voice stopped laughing. Then it spoke. She is ours now. Soon, he will be. And then you will be as well. We are them. We are you. We are all that will ever be, and all that will ever perish. We are the self. As it ended its monologue, the shadows rose and wrapped around Claris. She let out a scream as the disembodied voice cackled, only to be silenced as the darkness impaled through her mouth. The scream faded, and the game reset. Knights was no longer on the title screen. I returned to the character select to see that Claris was no longer selectable as well. Her name text was grayed out, and she was completely absent from the menu. Elliot, however, was still selectable. I noticed that in selecting levels for him, that the cursor would cross over into the icons for Claris's last level. The look on Elliot's face changed when I moved the cursor to the spiral level icon as if to beg me not to select it. I felt like I had to. Almost like I had to go back for Claris, so I hit the A button and took Elliot into the level. There was no sequence with knights, no wait to gain control over the flying kid. I had Elliot fly down into the abyss as self's laughter started back up. The things it said got more abusive, more demeaning than before. The words faggot and queer were mentioned several times. Like before, Elliot began to sob. 
as I neared the bottom of the spiral. As he reached the area that Clarice had been before, I noticed Knight's remains more rotted than before. The voice ceased laughing and spoke again. Now he belongs to us too. You will soon join us as well. There is no God to save you. You will join us in oblivion. The shadows rose around Elliot and swallowed him in the same manner they swallowed Clarus. The screen faded to black. And the voice spoke again almost tauntingly. We'll see you soon. The game reset to the same empty, nightsless screen that I'd seen before. I went to the character select screen and both characters were missing, yet the icon for the spiral was still selectable. I knew who it was for. Maybe one day, I'll face it myself.